Greetings Midchurch and welcome to Worship Unusual uh, on this Easter Sunday in lockdown. And I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Karen, Rachel, Emma, Nathan and I welcome you to our home and we really are looking forward to spending this very special time with you. And as before, we invite you to participate as best you can in the service of worship as we pray, we praise and we spend some time in the scriptures exploring God's word to us in our current circumstances. And although we are not together in one place, we are the church wherever we find ourselves. And we begin our worship with the traditional Easter greeting in English, Afrikaans, Isizulu and Greek. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christus het opgestaan. Hello Midchurch and a very special warm hello to all our kids at Midchurch. I so miss seeing you all at J4J and at Kids Church on Sundays but we have to be patient for a little longer and help to do all that we can to beat the coronavirus. And if that means being apart for now, then we can do it. But it is going to be the most awesome, amazing, fantastic day when we can all meet together again. For those watching who don't know who I am, my name is Karen, and I am the Kids at Midchurch pastor. In a usual worship at Midchurch service, myself, or Nicola, who is our youth pastor, would lead an interactive worship time with the congregation. And today I would like to share with you a poem that has been doing the rounds on social media. But before I share the poem, I want to ask you, who of you have heard of Dr. Zeus? I'm sure most of you are nodding your heads at this moment. Well, when I was a little girl, one of my favorite books was called Hop on Pop, and it was written by Dr. Seuss. I loved the book for two reasons. Firstly, it was just very, very funny. And secondly, we called one of my grandfathers Pop. So every time I read my book, I pictured myself hopping on my pop, which was also, well, very, very funny. Dr. Zeus has written many books and poems, so I'm sure you know his style of writing very well. To give you an example, I googled a few quotes and thought this one was especially meaningful at this time. Today you are you that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. Simple words with a profound truth. So, on to the poem for today. It was written by Christy Botho, and she uses the style of Dr. Zeus in her writing. So here it goes. An Easter poem. How the Virus Stole Easter by Christy Botho, with a nod to Dr. Zeus. It was late in 2019 when the virus began, bringing chaos and fear to all people and land. People were sick, the hospitals full, doctors overwhelmed, and no one in school. As winter gave way to the promise of spring, the virus raged on, touching peasant and king. People hid in their homes from the enemy unseen. They YouTubed and Zoomed, social distanced and cleaned. April approached and churches were closed. There won't be an Easter, the world supposed. There won't be church services and egg hunts are out. No reason for new dresses when we can't go about. Holy Week started as bleak as the rest. The world was focused on masks and on tests. Easter can't happen this year, it proclaimed. Online at home, it just won't be the same. Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, the days came and went. The virus went on, it just wouldn't relent. The world woke Sunday and nothing had changed. The virus still menaced, the people estranged. Poo-poo to the saints, the world was grumbling. 
They are finding out now that no Easter is coming. They are just waking up. We know what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. And then all the saints will all cry, Boo-hoo! That noise, said the world, will be something to hear. So it paused, and the world put a hand to its ear. And it did hear a sound coming through all the skies. It started down low. Then it started to rise. But the sound wasn't depressed. Why? The sound was triumphant. It couldn't be so. But it grew so abundant. The world stared around, popping its eyes. Then it shook. What it saw was a shocking surprise. Every saint in every nation, the tall and the small, was celebrating Jesus in spite of it all. It hadn't stopped Easter from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the world with its life, stuck in quarantine, stood puzzling and puzzling. It shouldn't have been. It came without bonnets. It came without bunnies. It came without egg hunts, cantatas or money. Then the world thought of something it hadn't before. Maybe Easter, it thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Easter, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, the story's not done. What will you do? Will you share with that one or two or more people needing hope in this night? Will you share the source of your life in this fight? The churches are empty, but so is the tomb. And Jesus is victor over death, doom and gloom. So this year at Easter, let this be our prayer. As the virus still rages all around everywhere, where? may the world see hope when it looks at God's people. May the world see the church is not building nor steeple. May the world find faith in his death and resurrection. May the world find joy in a time of dejection. May 2020 be known as the year of survival. But not only that. Let it start a revival. Easter is a celebration of the passing from death to life, from captivity to freedom, from exile to deliverance, from sin to redemption. In Mark 16 verse 6 we read, Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. A few weeks ago, one of our worship teams introduced us to a new song. It is very appropriate for Resurrection Sunday, and it is called Living Hope. The chorus reads like this. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Please join us as we sing together, Living Hope. Desperation, I turn to heaven and spoke. 
day, we come to worship you. In your presence we begin to understand the energy of your spirit and the power of your love. Our hearts are warmed again and you renew our hope and our confidence. Lord Jesus, we praise and we adore you. Easter morning reminds us of the empty tomb that nothing can separate us from your love. We join the countless number in heaven and on earth who proclaim your victory over sin and death. You are the Prince of Life, the Prince of Hope, and you are alive forevermore. You came to Mary in the garden and you turned her tears into joy. You you came to the disciples in the upper room and you turned their fear into courage. You came to the believers by the lakeside and you turned their failure into faith. You came to the disciples on the Emmaus Road and you turned their despair into hope. And Lord, you come to us today the same. Holy Spirit of God, renew our hearts and our minds this day, we pray, so that we may bear witness to Jesus as the risen Lord, the giver of hope, to whomever we encounter in the coming days, whether it is in our family and friends, in our homes, or those who share our place of employment, or even those who are strangers or brief acquaintances, that through your Holy Spirit, Lord, they will see your life in us and be drawn to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're going to continue to worship. Lord, I lift your name on high. scripture which has been written to reveal your word to us and so we ask that today you will teach us through your scriptures as they are read and as your word is proclaimed that you will shine the light of your truth and of your love into our hearts that we will be moved by your spirit 
to act in accordance to your goodwill and your guidance. Amen. Amen. So on Friday, you, if you had watched our Good Friday service, I told you about these prayer crosses, uh, this one and another one, and that I wasn't quite sure who had given me this uh, small prayer cross made from olive uh, wood from a tree in Israel. Well, on Friday morning, I received a WhatsApp on, from one of my very dear and long-standing friends and colleagues, George Marshinkowski, who is the minister at Somerset West United, and I quote, I am so hurt that you forgot who gave you that olive wood cross. I know, when I read that message, I was devastated. And he went on, he said, I will never come back to this church again. <laughs> but never fear, uh, we made up, um, I think. Uh, sorry, George, about, about that. And uh, just want to remind you that if you have dressed in white uh, this morning uh, or today for this uh, worship service, maybe take a photograph of yourself or you with your family or your friends. Won't you WhatsApp it to me? We'd love to put it together in a bit of a collage uh, to celebrate our fellowship on this Resurrection Sunday. I start every funeral or memorial service with these words. Welcome to a service of worship in which we bear witness to the resurrection and give thanks for and celebrate the life of whomever it might be. As followers of Jesus, in the face of death, we bear witness to the resurrection. Let's be very clear today. We do not believe in the resuscitation of Jesus Christ. We believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I hear Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's read what took place as John recalls it for us in his gospel in John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone that had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, and he looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I've seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen. I think many of you may know that we have a Garden of Remembrance on the Midchurch uh, property, which is used by bereaved families to inter the ashes of their loved ones and to then mark the place with a, a plaque with the name on it. Now, when interring the ashes, I always encourage the loved ones to return to that place, particularly on special occasions like birthdays or anniversaries, because it is normal and it is natural to do this, to want to pay respects, to cry, to remember, 
to give thanks, to grieve. Mary had gone to the tomb on that Sunday morning, the day after the Sabbath, to pay her respects to someone who had violently and traumatically been ripped out of her life. It was the normal and natural and expected thing for her to do. Today is Easter Sunday, and it is not the only, only the most important day of the year. It is also the only day in the Christian calendar that is set by the moon. You see, Easter always falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon on or after the autumn equinox, which this year falls on the 12th of April. Why? Because that is when the Jewish Passover is celebrated and Jesus was crucified and resurrected during the Passover festival. So as was mentioned on Friday during worship, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Passover. The Lamb who is slain and whose blood, which means whose life, is poured out so that the power of sin in our lives is broken. Jesus is the Passover Lamb and His blood, His life, is given to pay the penalty of our sin. But the connection between Jesus' resurrection and the moon and the equinox is a misleading one. Because whereas the cycle of the moon and the annual equinox is an entirely natural, normal and expected occurrence, the same cannot be said for the resurrection. It is not normal. It's not normal that a person who has died should come back to life. When a loved one dies, they die. And we are not reunited with them in this life. Resurrection is not normal nor natural. What is normal and natural is for a loved one of a deceased person to go to the grave and pay respects, a respect and to weep and to mourn. We are told that it was early on the Sunday morning and it was still dark when Mary discovers that the stone has been rolled away and she panics. All she has left of Jesus is his body. Why would anyone want to take away from her and the others who loved him the one thing they had left of him? It was a cruel joke. Or perhaps there was a concern that his tomb would become a shrine of some kind where the memory of his work and his life would be commemorated and be maintained by those who came to pay their respects. And so perhaps the authorities or someone else must have moved his body to prevent this. But, but where? The city dump? Out in the desert? I mean, can you imagine going to the grave of someone you love and seeing the soil removed and the coffin open and empty? She runs to the disciples to report what she has seen. They return to the grave and they seem to be confused because they head back to their homes uncertain, the Bible tells us. It took Jesus appearing to them personally later that evening for them to accept that he had indeed risen from the dead. However, Mary remained at the empty tomb that morning, weeping. She meets some messengers of God, some angels, and even this encounter does not rouse her out of her desperate sadness. Then she bumps into Jesus, but she thinks he is the gardener, and his only value to her is that he may know something about the missing body. Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him. I will take him away. What was she thinking? How would she carry his body? Over her shoulder? Clearly, her distress had left her bewildered. And then he calls her name. Mary. And she snaps out of her daze. And she sees the resurrected Jesus. Rabboni, she says, teacher the way she would have normally addressed him. But there is nothing normal about what has happened. There is no evidence that Mary was holding on to Jesus, and yet he says, do not hold on to me because I have not yet returned to the Father. Instead, go to my brothers and tell them. Perhaps it was the tone of her voice. Perhaps it was the fact that she had addressed him as she normally would have. But, but Jesus could sense Mary's natural desire to see things restored to the way they were before the events of the Friday. You are alive, Rabboni. Things can go back to normal. 
to the way they were. Has this not been our cry these past two weeks in this lockdown? As we face almost three more weeks, can things please go back to the way they were before COVID-19? However, I think we are all beginning to realize that this pandemic will change the way the world functions and works and the way people relate and love. This is a world-altering, history-changing time that we are living through. And many are weeping at the loss of the way things were before. Mary went to the tomb weeping over her loss of the way things had been. But Jesus' crucifixion had disrupted all they knew so well, all they took comfort in. Death tends to do that. So when, Jesus, when she saw Jesus resurrected, her immediate thought and relief would be that things could go back to the way they were. But nothing could go back to the way it was. Jesus' resurrection changes everything. So he says, don't hold on to me. Don't try and keep me here where you are, where you want me to be. I am on the move. Things are not going back to the way they were. It is an entirely new day, a new life, a new beginning. Instead, go and tell the others. Mary went to the grave that Sunday morning, the natural thing to do, the normal thing to do, to pay her respects. To mourn, to grieve. Death is natural. Loss is natural. Grief is natural. Fear and worry are natural responses to the dramatic and even traumatic change that this pandemic has brought to us all. But those stones of death, of loss, of grief, of fear, of worry and anxiety were rolled away on that happy morning to reveal a highly unnatural truth. God did the unexpected, and things would never be the same again. Resurrection Sunday confronts us with the surprising, unnatural truth that God has planted in us life that cannot be killed. Paul speaks of this new life in us in Romans 8.11. He says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. This new life, the resurrected life, the life of Jesus is His Holy Spirit in us. Which means... That our lives are no longer dominated by death. They are no longer dominated by fear. They are no longer dominated by hatred. But by His Spirit of life and hope and love. Writing to the Christians in Asia Minor, in Asia Minor which is modern day Turkey. Peter affirms in 1 Peter 1, 3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A living hope. And when we believe this, when we allow God's Spirit to take root in our hearts and our minds, then there is very little we cannot do. What did Jesus say? Move mountains, banish fear. Love our enemies? Change the world? Because of the resurrection of Jesus, the spirit of this resurrected Jesus now lives in us. We should not expect the ordinary anymore. Instead, we should look for the extraordinary. To love in the face of hate. To give in the face of want. To serve in the face of selfishness. And to care in the face of our own hurt and suffering. And the one thing we cannot do, we must not do, is try to keep Jesus where we want Him to be. To 
domesticate him, to treat him like a child's comforter, like our blankie, our good luck charm. He does not give us that option. He does not want us to stay trapped in the events of the Friday. He does not want us to stay trapped in death and in hatred and in hopelessness and in fear. Oh no. Instead, he invites us to join him and to go where he is going, where things are done differently, where instead of a dead body, we find a resurrected one, where instead of hate, we find love, where instead of hopelessness, we find hope, and instead of fear, we find faith. Things don't go back to normal after you meet with the resurrected Jesus. They simply cannot. This is the truth and the experience that has caused you to watch this worship service today. You know that life cannot simply carry on as normal in the light of the empty tomb. Don't be stuck on Friday. Death, COVID-19, is not the end of the story. Grief, pain, hatred, violence, worry is not the end of the story. He rose from the dead. And this resurrected Jesus can live in you. Are you going to move with Jesus and expect the unexpected? Living and experiencing a new way? Love, grace, forgiveness, compassion, hope. It's a new day, my friends. A new beginning. A new life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come, let's pray together. Friends, I want to invite you to allow God's word proclaimed into your life today to take deep root, to take confidence from the fact that we worship a mighty God who has overcome death. We serve a mighty God who moves His people through His Holy Spirit to do extraordinary things. We don't know what is going to happen after this lockdown is finally over. We don't know what businesses are going to be able to be resurrected. We don't know what new things we are going to have to do as we face an uncertain future. But we know that by God's grace and by the Spirit of the risen Christ in us, that nothing is impossible. That nothing is impossible. Friends, do not allow the uncertainty of these times to cause you to doubt that God is a mighty God and that He will do mighty things once again through us once this time has passed and it will pass. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and take residence in our lives and in our hearts, in our minds as we move through the rest of this lockdown period. We pray that you will give us a vision for the future, that you will give us a way forward, that you will perhaps give us new ideas and new thoughts and new things as we come out of this time. We do not want to get stuck in the life before the lockdown, and we do not want to get stuck in the life during the lockdown. We are looking to a new thing in the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Friends, it is time for our tithes and offerings. Um, and uh, today, Emma is going to lead us in our offering reading. 1 Peter 4, verses 8 to 10. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless. Cheerfully, be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them around so all get in on it. If words... Let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. And he'll get all the credit as the one mighty in everything. Friends, a reminder at this time, when we cannot be together and receive uh, our cash, tithes and offerings during a normal Sunday worship service, that you are encouraged, please, to continue to support the ministry of Mid Church. And what God is doing uh, through us and to give by direct deposit into the Midchurch bank account. And you'll find those bank details on our website at www.midchurch.co.za. Come, let's give thanks for your offerings. Let's pray. 
Almighty God, I thank you once again for all those who are being so very generous at this very difficult time. We thank you for those who are giving within your church and uh, the ways that you are using us as your people to bless others. But also thank you for the great generosity that we are seeing through folk who have a great deal of means, through businesses, through government, even through our own president and others who are taking cuts in their salaries to be able to support those who are struggling. And so Lord, I thank you for all the offerings and all the tithes that have been given by direct transfer into the church bank account. May you prosper this ministry, Lord, and may you bless it and multiply it for the goodness of your kingdom and the glory of your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So friends, as you will all know, uh, these online worship services have been a family affair. And so I would like to acknowledge the team effort that this has taken. And I want to say how very thankful I am to Karen, who's on projection, Rachel, who's on the piano, Emma, who is our vocalist, and Nathan, who is on camera. I applaud you guys. And I thank you so very much uh, for all of you and what you have uh, been doing. Um, and because of the two extra weeks in lockdown, it means that you are going to have to see us in this format for a little while uh, longer. Oh, and just by the way, today is Rachel's 20th birthday. So happy birthday, my girl. I love you very much. And I hope you have a very special day on this Easter Sunday for your 20th uh, birthday. But we're going to end this Easter Sunday worship with one of the great hymns of the church. How can we have an Easter Sunday service of worship without singing, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Let's worship together. say the benediction together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.
and we will join together again for worship next week.